Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start things off with some very cool news regarding AMD's Epic Roam. So, what we have here is a bit of a whoopsie from HP, who have basically listed some benchmark results for AMD's Epic Roam, which of course is based on Zen 2, shortly before the official unveiling, which is going to be tonight, roughly around 11 o'clock UK time, so you can expect a unveiling later on tonight, and obviously more information from us most likely tomorrow, given how the lateness of the time. However, according to HP, their new servers, DL325 and 385, have broken 37, yes, 37 world record benchmark results. Very, very impressive, I'm sure you'd agree. And just to cherry pick one of the benchmarks, one of them was a virtualization performance benchmark, and they have beaten the record on this by 321%. And that's obviously the server itself, which is powered by AMD Epic. And this particular record was for the TPC Express benchmark processor server performance measure running virtualized databases. To put that in plainer terms, it basically measures performance of a virtualized server platform under a demanding database workload, and it stresses various things like CPU and memory hardware, storage, networking, and so on and so on. So, this is looking very, very impressive indeed. 37 world records is no slouch to say the least. But, as I've already said, we can expect a full reveal from AMD later on tonight, so do keep your eyes peeled, my friends. But my friends, that is not the only AMD thing we have for you today, no, no, no. In fact, we even have an article on this very topic next regarding AMD Arcturus and Navi. So as I just alluded to, Paul has done an article on this subject. You can find that linked in the description up below this video. So we've been talking an awful lot about obviously the top end Navi, big Navi as it ends up being called. And of course, we've been talking about Arcturus a lot as well. So. Essentially, we have Arcturus, Navi 12, and Navi 14 support appearing in Linux. And as you might guess, if you're a regular watcher of this channel, if there's something to do with Linux, it's probably thanks to Pharonix.com, and that was indeed the case. So, what actually happened is that AMD sent a pull request of the feature changes to their graphics driver for Linux. And this is basically for the September Linux 5.4 kernel. And there's various things mentioned. So we see add Navi 14 support, add Navi 12 support, add Arcturus support, and a few other things as well. This is mentioned in both AMD GPU and AMD KFDE. So obviously Lisa Sue did comment recently on a rumour of a Q4 release. Now she didn't comment whether or not Q4 was correct, but she did hint that we would be seeing a quote-unquote big Navi. The timing of all of this, and the rumours and Lisa Sue's comments, and all the other recent discussions that we've had about Arcturus and of course Big Navi, does add a lot of weight to the rumours of the release. Of course at this stage it is still rumour, and you may recall that there's also rumblings that Arcturus is not going to be a graphics card in the traditional sense, it is going to be solely focused on compute. But again, that is just a rumour, but I would be very, very surprised to not see a top-end Navi card. What touring cards will we see it compete with? Impossible to say without knowing the performance, but AMD know they have a glaring hole in that area. And obviously they need to fill out the lower end as well, as I've said myself, but we're talking about big Navi here. Basically, everything's lining up for these rumours to be true, but again, do take this with a pinch of salt, as per normal. So... Let's finish our AMD segment, we have a bit more after that, with a recent Agisa update. So this report is thanks to PCGamesHardware.de and you will find the link in to their article in the description below this video. So essentially this update is actually to remove support for PCIe 4.0 from free X570 motherboards. Now you may recall that numerous manufacturers did enable support on B450 and X470. Some had limited support, others had full support, but this went against AMD's strategy with X570, and now we are basically seeing this functionality removed in AMD's latest Agisa update. Now, of course, that's not all that comes with the update. We see uh, various other things. Um, Horizon 3000 and Destiny 2 and yada yada yada, but the crux of what we're caring about at least is this removal of the PCIe 4.0 support. 
Now you may may wonder, why are AMD doing this? Well, without an official statement from them, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I'm just going to make an educated guess. Basically, these boards were not made with PCIe 4 in mind. So they may work, as we say, we limited support on some boards and full support in terms of some ASUS boards, I believe. But they weren't designed for PCIe 4, and signal integrity is not 100% guaranteed, and AMD arguably could be liable for any issues that could happen due to the fact that these boards are being made to work in a way that they were not designed to do. That is my guess as to why they have done this. So, that's me done with our tech segment for today, but we've got quite a bit of gaming news, the next of which is one of my favourite topics to rant about, and that's loot boxes. So, I have talked about this a lot. You know, ever since the Star Wars Battlefront 2 fiasco, we've been looking a lot at loot boxes and how predatory they can be, you know, whether or not they're gambling, I personally think they are, as I've said many times. Governments have weighed in, they've been banned in certain places like Belgium, for instance, and the UK government has said they're not gambling for now, as has the FTC. But, so now we have a very interesting update as the Entertainment Software Association announced that Sony, Nintendo and Microsoft have agreed to a voluntary change on their policies towards loot boxes. So basically, going forward, any new games or game updates that add loot boxes on any of these platforms will be required to disclose the rarity of items. So I do have a bit of a statement here from Michael Walkner, I hope they pronounced his name correctly. Uh, he is of the ESA, and he said, quote, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony have indicated to the ESA a commitment to new platform policies with respect to the use of paid loot boxes in games that are developed for their platform. Specifically, this would apply to new games and game updates that add loot box features, and it would require the disclosure of the relative rarity or probabilities of obtaining randomised virtual items in games available on their platforms. Now, obviously, some publishers already have chosen to do this of their own volition, but this is basically making it a requirement. If you have a new game or game update that adds these features, and you want to be on these platforms, you better get revealing them statistics, son. So, I have said many times that I feel like adding the chance plainly in, on the screen when you're about to buy a loot box or whatever of getting X item. You know, if, if, say, for example, let's take Overwatch. You know, that's the game that first pops into my head when you talk about loot boxes, because much we talk about Star Wars Battlefront 2 and how disastrous that was, Overwatch has been very, very successful with the loot box model. Anyway, so let's just take Overwatch as an example. So that has an obscene amount of items that you can unlock with a loot box. You know, voice lines, intros, characters, skins... Oh, not, sorry, not characters. Character skins is what I meant to say. Sprays, all sorts. So, in a case of that, you probably need like a searchable list, because, you know, I'm looking for the new Bastion skin or whatever, just for instance. Then it would tell you the chance of winning the Bastion skins. You know, even just being able to define it by character and type would be useful. Either way, regardless of all the semantics, I've said many times that this is a great way to kind of one of the, well, not, not to completely tackle the problem, but definitely a step in the right direction, because... It, if you give an informed adult information saying, look, you've got like a 2% or whatever chance of getting that new skin and they choose to spend money anyway, that's up to them. They have seen the statistic and they've decided, you know what, I'm happy to put five bucks towards getting that chance. But obviously at the moment, we have literally no idea of, of how, you know, how lucky or unlucky you have to be to get it or not get it. So I really like this move and I hope we see it implemented elsewhere. I feel like this is a very nice way, a very unintrusive way to just inform people and help sort of um... but of course let me know your thoughts on this one guys so we are going to finish up today's proceedings with yet more news on the Nintendo Switch so of course we know the Switch micro sorry not micro light uh, is a thing that was officially confirmed by Nintendo quite recently. But we have a report from Wall Street Journal which basically said that there are even more versions of the Switch in the pipeline. And they wrote, quote, Chief Executive Shintaro Furukawa has said the company is always working on new hardware. And they've also went as far to confirm some things like we're going to see the new models use indium gallium zinc oxide supplies from Sharp, which allow higher resolution, lower energy consumption, and durability. And that these are found in things like 8K TVs, for instance. 
Now we don't know which new models are going to use these EXO displays. And of course, we don't know how many versions they have planned. You know, Nintendo do have a bit of a history, especially with their handhelds, um, of having like million different versions, like the DS and the DSi and the DS Lite and all of this. So I would not be surprised to see like two or three versions of the Switch. Will the new Switch Lite have EXO display? Well, unfortunately, it's not clear. Um, will it just be limited to the Pro? Assuming that even exists, eh, it's tough to say, but according to the Wall Street Journal, and you will find their article linked in the description below, Nintendo have yet more in store for us when it comes to the Switch. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Just as a quick update, um, tomorrow I will be away for four days. I'm going to Bloodstock Festival up in Derbyshire. If you do happen to be attending and you see me, do say hello. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you again.